The stronger you are against heavy resistance, the less explosive you will become. Franz Bosch is probably the number one sprint scientist in the world. He and Peter Weyand. It's just, it's a fact that the stronger you are lifting up, like this guy is not fast, right? Just not fast. Infinite strength is nowhere we want to be. Infinite speed is pretty damn good. I know I'm beating this to death, but the myth is that stronger means you're faster. That is not true. However, fast people are strong. That's why so many meatheads, I say that in a loving way, but um, so many meatheads uh, want to talk about all these elite sprinters who squatted two times body weight or three or whatever. And there's no question, Marcel Smore, uh, graduated in December, but he played football for us this year, and he was telling me that he was getting a C and P during the season because Knothead wrestling coach was his teacher and said, if you don't lift, you're, you're going to get a C. So finally he said, okay, I'll lift. And uh, the first day of lifting, he put 265 on and did it six times. Bench. 265 six times. Marcel weighs 149. 5'6", 149. Six times, 265. People that have extreme nervous systems can recruit massive numbers of motor neurons. No, uh, not motor, uh, muscle fibers. Okay? They have a, such a great connection that they're, they're just strong. Now this is weird. We don't push sleds. We just don't. Somebody last night said they do, right? Did Corpus say that? Yeah. So here's the deal. J.B. Morin said, oh, it's awesome. Somebody just sent me a study three days ago saying it sucks. I don't know. Why, do, why is it that we do not push them? We do not like the slowness. We want to err on the side of central nervous system. Bang, 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 bang all the time. We just don't do things slow. Now, could this be good for weak people? I mean, we all know that you know, there's different things that work for different people. I'm not saying don't do this, I'm just saying we don't. And we're successful. We don't pull things either. I will have to say this, with my association with Brian Kula and his training and McCaffrey, they do pull things. Not often and not heavy. 10% body weight. Max. The Christian never pulls anything more than 20 pounds. Now that would probably fit into my idea pretty good because it's not slowing you down much. Does that make sense? That, that a slight resistance is a lot better than a big resistance. And plus I, I've never liked anything around the waist. Never, I, I used bungee cords back in the day but that pull of the bungee cord that pull behind you at the waist, I just don't, don't, don't like it. I think this is just dumb. Oh sure, I bought them 20 years ago, and it seemed cool, you know, it seemed, yeah, that's just dumb. This is a good story, Connor Artman from Illini West High School, his dad was his coach. Uh, Connor Artman, I wrote an article about him, uh, his dad brought him to me, Corfist, and my son Alec. Like, he just kept going in this triangle among the three people. Three very, and he was a hurdler too. He long jumped 20, close to 23 feet as a junior. We, we worked with him between his junior and senior season. And uh, I went with him his first trip to Corfus because I always love what Chris has to say to people. The stuff that comes out of his mouth, amazing. So he, he says, uh, Connor's dad says, what should we be doing in the weight room? And Chris says, Connor's strong enough. And I've never heard anybody say that before. But if you look at it, I don't know how much bigger that quad right here needs to get. You know what I'm saying? The guy's like 5'9". 5'8", 5'9". With speed training, 10 meter flies, he was running like 096. He, he long jumped 24 feet as a senior. And then he went to Notre Dame, and guess what Notre Dame did for his training? Squat, clean, bench, gained 15 pounds, 
long jump 21-6 PR. They blamed him. Through, that's what college coaches do. They blamed him. He came home and was running 1.08 in the 10-meter fly. He'd lost all of his speed, all of it, and transferred to Illinois. It only took Connor, I think, four weeks in the summer to start running fast again. Okay, Damon Lampley jumped uh, over seven foot for me in 1995, 13 times. I was not a high jump coach, uh, but I, uh, I would walk over when the bar got up high to let people know, you know, that I was his coach, you know, and, and uh, I, I would try to say real simple, you know, like, clear your brain, run fast, jump high. And, and one day he said, he said, he said, coach, you realize how good I will be when I finally get some great coaching next year at Iowa State. The next five years at Iowa State, his, his best was 6'11". And what did they do? I mean, he's still good. But what they do, in my opinion, to mess him up, they turn him into a cleaner. He got to, be a, he got to clean well. I mean, he gave, gained 10 pounds. They told him not to play basketball anymore because basketball risks injury. I believe basketball is the greatest thing in the world for a high jumper, period. Greatest thing in the world. Third thing they did was no more sprinting. Even though he's 1064 for me, he wasn't quite fast enough to make their four by one team at Iowa State. So, so those things and, you know, he did it for five years and wasn't as good anymore. Uh, this Capri Bibbs, he ran for me, scored uh, 31 touchdowns, 28 rushing touchdowns for Colorado State about five years ago uh, in his only year at Colorado State. Uh, amazing, amazing player. And, uh, and so he left early to go to the pros. Well, Capri did not come back and train with me. He went to a bodybuilder and a tattoo artist. Uh, to train for the NFL Combine, and he ends up running 4.67. He goes from being a $3 million guy, expected first, you know, people leave early, or expecting first round draft choice. He was not drafted. Uh, but this made sense to him, because there's probably somebody saying, we're going to get you big and strong and fast. And it's, they didn't. That's a death, I mean, you, you just don't get drafted. This is a cool picture of Capri at age 17 and 27. Uh, I'll, I'll guarantee you that he spent less, that at least 40 varsity football players spent more time in the weight room than Capri did, and he still looked like that. I mean, it, not much of a difference. Not much of a difference. Lots of natural strength. He was born to be a running back. Capri, when he came in to me, uh, had one time his freshman year below 12. He ran 11, ran 11.9 one time. He was an extremely high responder. Had never played soccer, never been a jogger. And he ran 10.8 as a 10.81 as a sophomore. And then he started getting thick. And he never broke 11 as a junior. But the point that I like here, you can tell he's the same guy. He scored four touchdowns last year for the Skins. Not this season, but the year before. He's out of football now. He had four good years in the NFL. Uh, but he's the same guy. But he's told me that, in his opinion, if he would not have run track, he would have never been in the NFL. And I agree, because he would have just gotten thicker and clunkier. And... This is what we want in our athletes. Uh, Nick Chubb, you know, the great running back, you know, this is a state meet. He won, he won this race. He also won the shot put the same day. He's state champion in the shot put. Uh, now, football coaches will see this picture and say, man, we got to get in the weight room. What I say is, that son of a bitch can jump. Oh, and any time you see a guy jump like that, he's probably going to win the race. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, so, so how do you... The only way you can plant beans and grow corn is in jump training, in my opinion. This is interesting. I'm sharing with you some secret stuff from Brian Kula. You can get Brian Kula's two videos for 15 each on our website. Brian Kula, I was so excited when I read the stuff about McCaffrey because I thought, oh my God, McCaffrey is, he's being fed. Somebody has read my shit. And so I called Brian Kula and said, hey, this is Tony Howard. You know, feed the cats. You, he goes, I've never heard of you. 
Okay. <laughs> um, but when I read stuff like this, I'm thinking, everything I do is pertinent to track all my speed work with a track coach, all my lifting with a track coach. I'm thinking, damn, that's feeding the cats. Good stuff. Really good stuff. This is Christian and, uh, and Brian. So, how does this cat lift? And before you say, well, hell, he's a running back. <laughs> Remember, speed is important for everybody. I'll make that case strongly soon. Um, Barry Ross, I just read this book. Finished it two weeks ago. Uh, Barry Ross died in 2012, I think. Brian and I are sitting down drinking beers after a TFC. And I'm like, okay, if I was just going to go in and do 15 to 20 minutes in the weight room, what's your 20%? You know, what's your 20% that produces 80% results? He said, I got it, I got it. You go in and you max out upper body. I mean, you just push ups until you're tired or pull ups or, you know, bench or something. Just, just get a pump going up top because you're going to deadlift heavy. Deadlift heavy as you can. Three reps, lift, drop, lift, drop, lift, drop. That's all concentric, no eccentric. And then walk over and do like five hurdle hops or 10 pogo jumps or, you know, something bouncy. And then you go over and sit down for five minutes. I said, did Christian like that? He goes, no, he'd stare at me and like cuss, you know, like, like okay, come on. And okay, just a couple things like, why concentric? Concentric does not create any soreness. I know you S&C people all know that, but not all of us are like, not all of us know that. There is zero soreness that happens. We only get sore with eccentric. When we lengthen a contracted muscle, when we lengthen a contracted muscle, that's when we get mic micro tears. I'm like, now wait a minute, eccentric is, is the holy grail though. Eccentric is what we're after, isn't it? And he goes, yeah, if you want hypertrophy, if you want to get big, build larger muscles, it is the most important. You've all heard that, right? That this is not as important as fighting the negative. But if all you did was this and somebody took the bar, you'd never be sore. <coughs> ah, the main reason why I don't like lifting in season in track is that I do not like a secondary recovery issue. Follow me? Like, you track coaches know that sprinting is a recovery issue. We can't sprint every day. So why would I want to worry about recovering from sprinting and recovering from the weight room? Especially the legs. So that's why I don't, do not like in-season lifting. But already I'm like, okay, you got me here. No soreness, no recovery. Awesome. Uh, why do we take five minutes between reps? Uh, total replenishment of ATP. How long do we take between 10 meter flies or 40 yard dashes? Five minutes. Kids feel good after two, but they will run slow. ATPs aren't back yet. Full ATP recovery. I'm training some kid from out near Philadelphia, and I was telling him this, and I said, oh wait, you lift with your team, don't you? Your high school team. He goes, yeah. I said, what would happen if your coach saw you sitting in the weight room? So he kicked me out. So that's kind of where we're at. But this is a, oh, by the way, uh, Kula, this is another cool story. Kula's son is 6'5", skinny, point guard, great player for the varsity basketball team at Valor High School. And they do this two days before a game. They, they will do this with the skinny 6'5 kid, and he's getting stronger all the time without a secondary recovery issue. <laughs>